on this episode of Bondi Vet. Excuse me. Excuse me. Chris heads to an animal rescue shelter and faces a tough crowd. All hell breaks loose. It is every man for himself. Oh, don't bite down there. No. Oh. Come here, baby. Oh, no. A distressed owner pleads for Lisa's help. My initial thought was he had a stroke. It looked like a human that had had a stroke. Oh. Tim risks life and limb as he comes between a killer mum and her unborn babies. She just sees red. Someone's near the nest. I'm going to kill her. Hey. That's quite dramatic, mate. Yeah. And a mission to save a donkey in a dire situation. If it deteriorates to a point that he can't move around, then really I'll have to look at euthanasia as an option. You make my world a better place. <laughs> yes! We get you walking again soon. <laughs> Whenever I'm in Melbourne, I always take time out to see someone who I think is pretty special. Pam Ahern is essentially the patron saint of animals, and she always needs a vet. Chris has arrived at Edgar's mission a sanctuary for homeless animals about an hour's drive from Melbourne. Hey Pam, how are you? Good, thanks Chris. Thanks so much for coming. That's all right. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. How are you going? Now what's on today? We've got quite a bit on today. Burpee the pig needs a bit of a tusk trim. Yeah. Gretel, the little three-legged calf's grown and she needs her foot trim. So we've got quite a big day for you. I didn't doubt it. <laughs> Who's up first? Uh, we'll do Burpee the pig, eh? All right. For most people, just a couple of pets are a big ask and take up a lot of time. but. Pam has over 300, all coming from really tough backgrounds. So for me to come along here and treat the odd pig, the odd lamb or cow, I get a bit of a buzz out of it, but you know it's making such a difference to the animals here that really deserve that help. Well, we've got Burpee over here. That's, that's Burpee? When Pam tells me that I'm here to treat Burpee, I think, great, I know Burpee. This was how Burpee looked when he last met Chris. He was just a tiny piglet. Not anymore. Burpee's changed. Burpee's all grown up. Hello, Burp. How have you been pig? eating, Burpee? Hello, you good pig? Hello. Hello, buddy. Yeah, you've changed just a little. You can see these farm pigs, they get quite big. Those tusks. <laughs> this is yeah. the problem here, they're starting to really grow up. Yeah, they're really starting to get quite big, and... yeah, and they're, they're quite pointy. Burpee's now 220 kilos of grunting muscle. <laughs> and knows that he has big tusks to use on any vet that comes near him. They're fair weapons. They are. I mean, they can see that they've really evolved to be great fighting tools, mm. the angle that they grow out on. And this is our difficulty because he has a couple of friends in his paddock with him. He only has to just gently swing that head around and he can cut the other pigs. And even, you know, for us when we go in to feed him because they do love belly rubs and pats and things like that. So um, we've got to think of our safety as well. Those tusks are big, they're starting to curl around. So he obviously needs it done, whether he knows that. Not so sure. Look, there's not too many jobs at the park that rattle me. Not too many that scare me, but female alligators are one of them. They're pretty terrifying. It's alligator breeding season at the Australian Reptile Park. Hey boys. Today's mission for General Manager Tim Faulkner is to retrieve freshly laid eggs. Sitting just in front of the nest. Oh, she's out already. Let's get in. But first, he has to get past some very aggressive mums. Right up, on your toes, boys. For Tim and the team, it's a dangerous race against time. Oh, here she comes already. Our climate here is too hot. It's not like where gators are naturally from in the States. We need to get those eggs out before today's sun hits them because they will overheat and die. You gonna play nice, Shirley? Please settle. The process is pretty simple on paper. Hey, We catch the female, remove her from the nest, collect the eggs, and then let her go. Sounds simple, but it's not that easy. Just watch those other gators too, boys. Female alligators are some of the best mothers on earth. 
And they are that because they are over the top protective. They will stop at nothing. Incredibly scary, and they simply want to kill. Oh. Oh. I just get the funny feeling that food might somehow be Burpee's friend. Yeah, certainly is, yep. They're well-known pigs. Burpee has dangerously overgrown tusks that need to be trimmed. But first, the 220 kilo pig will need to be sedated. And Chris has a cunning plan. What's on the menu? <laughs> we've got pig mash, we've got molasses and warm water just to give it that extra flavour. It's like a really funky porridge. <laughs> well, let's hope it's his personal favourite. With a big bowl of food in front of him, he'll be distracted enough, I'll be able to sneak up and put a little injection into his neck. You're hungry, aren't you? Oh, beautiful. It's no wonder you've got that amazing <laughs> figure, Burpee. Yeah. Good boy. Hey, how good's this? The moment the food goes down, it's pretty clear why Burpee is called Burpee. The way he eats, it's horrific. You have to feel something. So now it's just a matter of getting this injection in nice and slowly while he's eating. And then once he's asleep, we can get in there and do these tusks. There we go, buddy. There we go. You're done. He was good, wasn't he? That was fantastic. Chris was a bit taken by surprise how easy the sedation went. So um, let's hope the next part is as easy as the first part. Bed. 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 Come on. Thank you. Back to bed. Good boy. Oh, he's getting groggy, isn't he? Good boy. Good piggy. Oh, he's a good pig. He's a good pig. Come on. Oh, what a good pig. Oh, <laughs> missed the starting line. Go. Go. That's it, buddy. Good man. Good boy. Just arranging the bed. So the plan is to get in there with the wire, being very careful that he is going to stay asleep and then start to shave those tusks away. It's incredibly dangerous, so we just have to make sure he is really and truly asleep. Oh, watch out. At the Alligator Lagoon at the Australian Reptile Park, Oi. it's a tense standoff between Tim and a very angry mum. This deadly predator has just laid eggs and they must be collected quickly before they cook in the heat. That's it. Okay, on boys, in the back. Mick with me. There you go, let's go. She's got no idea that we're actually trying to help her. Got it, mate. We're trying to save her babies. She just sees red, someone's near the nest, I'm gonna kill them. Good job, boys. Let's get those eggs. We like to try and do this nice and quick. Gators can get a lactic acid build up pretty quickly. And if she fights and struggles for yeah, even 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's too long. Builds up, they can't cool down, it can cause them big problems. So we want to get in, get the eggs, and let it go. These are beauty, boys. Good looking eggs. Hobes, you better come down, mate. Just let go. Yep, you're right, boys. The other alligators are becoming hey, agitated. Tim stay and the there. team are in an extremely dangerous situation. Hey, you stay down, big fella. Even though we want to get in and get out, it's one egg at a time. And that can be a, a little bit frustrating because you've got gators everywhere, you've got a mum that we need to let go, and you've just got to put them in very delicately. That's 20 eggs, and I've just found a whole nother section. Still another dozen or more, easy in yep. there. Yep. Watch that little one on to your side, mate. Yeah, to it? Yeah, you are. You're asleep enough. At Edgar's mission in Victoria, Burpee is now asleep and Chris is happy to start removing his dangerous tasks. So this is the one we've got to cut here. Geez, that's sharp. It's only now when Burpee's asleep and I can actually feel those tusks with my own fingers that I realise just how sharp they are. They obviously need to come off. Getting them off, though, might be tricky. 
the key here is just getting the wire in around this task and getting an initial cut because this doesn't really work that well otherwise. I reckon the drill sounds bad at the dentist. Oh wow, good job. I've got a feeling the one on the other side is even bigger. That means rolling over a 220 kilogram pig. This is not going to be simple. Good pig. Good boy, Burpee. Good boy. Oh, oh. Way to go, Burp. I think you got there. <laughs> what you got there? It's about two inches long, so almost six centimetres with a really sharp point in it. Oh, bingo. Oh, look at that one. That's a good one. <laughs> now that Burpee's done, Pam and all the volunteers here are going to be a lot safer. There's no doubt about that. But before Chris leaves Burpee to sleep off the sedation, he has one final gift. Obviously, Burpee believes in the tooth fairy. Absolutely. I'll just stop me here, Burps. Didn't see anything. Billy. Billy. What's the matter? Ballo, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, has suddenly collapsed and been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash. All of a sudden he just lied on the kitchen floor, couldn't focus, his head tilted to one side and he just couldn't stand up. He was just like going in circles. It was very upsetting. Glenda and her daughter-in-law Georgia are fearing the worst. My initial thought was he had a stroke. It looked like a human that had had a stroke. Bring him through. Emergency vet Dr Lisa Chimes needs to urgently assess the six-year-old. Hey, honey, your world's upside down. What's happened? He just went down, his eyes started flickering, and he just couldn't stand. He couldn't, like, he was all over the place. So what we really need to do now is work out, is this a problem going on in his brain, or is this a problem going on outside of his brain. Right. So somewhere like in the ears. Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop him on the floor, see what he can do. Come here, baby. Oh, oh come here, baby. Bello, come here. There's something going on with Bello that is affecting the nerve that's controlling his balance. He's not too steady at all. There's a whole variety of things it could be, and we need to do some more tests to work out why. So I'm gonna have a look inside his ears, see yep. if there's any problems there. That one looks pretty good. So his ears look actually pretty clean. There's no inflammation. There's nothing I can see down that ear canal that's causing any issues. Okay. That doesn't necessarily rule out ear problems, okay? Because okay? yep. I'm just looking at the outside, outside ear not canal. The inner. Exactly. Yep. Hey, baby. Bella will now undergo a CT scan to determine if the problem is within the inner ear or the brain. Hey, what's going on? Problems inside the brain could be something like a stroke, mm -hmm. something like a tumour in yeah. his brain, some sort of inflammatory disease in his brain. Just get him better. Oh. We just want him home. Oh, want to get him home, hey? Home and better, the way he was. The worst case scenario would be that Bello's got a brain tumour and I really, really hope that's not something I'm going to have to tell Glenda. Right, Gretel's a dear little bobby calf we rescued a couple of years ago. Yeah. She was born with three legs. She's coping really well with her disability. I've never seen a three-legged cow before. At Edgar's mission in Victoria, Chris's next patient is Gretel. Hey, guy. Hi, Chris. How nice are you? to meet you. Hey, I'm you Kyle. Hey, Kyle. I can see what she likes. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the problem, isn't it? That's right, yeah. The, the hoofs are starting to compensate there and, and growing awkwardly. 
The problem with her situation is that it's pushing those toes outwards and those toes are actually becoming malformed. They now need trimming, otherwise they'll keep on growing to the point where she just won't be able to walk. Provided we can keep some weight on her with Kyle, I think we're a good chance actually just trimming that foot without any drugs, without any yards, oh, that's good. without any pain. That sounds like a plan. Normally cows only give you one chance. If you blow that, you've totally lost your cover and they'll just run away. We've got to make the most of this chance. How many are we up to now? 45. Tim is in the danger zone at the Australian Reptile Park. Just watch that little girl there. We've got two now. Hey! The female alligators have just laid their eggs and they need to be removed before they fry in the sun. 51. New record by one egg. But these killer mums will stop at nothing to protect their unborn babies. There you go, Cheryl. Good mum. Mum will keep defending this nest for a couple of weeks, uh, maybe a month. Obviously, her little gators won't hatch, so at a point, she'll just leave the nest. She won't know any different, and she'll slide back into the water and she'll do what she normally does. OK, number two. Next gator's Firecracker, and she's got that name for a reason. She's a real scary gator. Come on, a little bit further this way. That's a good mum. Bit more. Bit more, please. Hey. I feel like bait. Right around. Whoa, that's quick. Okay, yep. That's it, mate. Okay, pass the rope around this side and come up behind me. Obes, Chris. Whoa, what's that little one? One, two, three. Got the legs up, Obes. Yep. Do you want to slide up here, Obes? One, two, three, go. Right, let's get these eggs out nice and quick. How much long you got in there, Tim? This girl's getting a little bit fired up here now. She's probably going to unleash very soon. That's it. It's 31. Right, so let's do this normally. Chris, how off? Obes, one, two, three. See that alligator? So now, it's pretty critical that we get the eggs into our incubator. There you go, mate. You have to be really careful that you don't muck up the temperature. If they're too cold or hot just for five, ten hours, they'll die. They need to be very specific. And the hotter it is, maybe 34 degrees, makes for boys. And the cooler it is, maybe 31 degrees, makes girls. Lucky last. Here you go, mate. See you in a couple of months. What I'm thinking is, if I can just get my fingers into her nose, it's really good control for them. They shouldn't really move their head after that. At Edgar's mission, an overgrown hoof is putting severe pressure on Gretel's leg. The nail needs to be trimmed, otherwise the three-legged cow will soon be unable to walk. I'm going to be a bit nervous while Chris is actually doing this procedure on Gretel because it is uh, very uh, tricky. Just going to get my fingers into her nose. I didn't really get the fingers in the nose. <laughs> it's more of a wrestle than I thought. Yeah. She's strong. She is. Yeah, yeah. she's had to be, you know, and she's tough. She, she doesn't like to feel like things aren't going away because she knows that she's a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Come on. It's all right. Let's get a hand in here. Come on. Let's put a head, push her head down. Yep. It's all hands on deck. Call in whoever we can and make sure we get this hoof trimmed right now. Good girl. Good girl. I just don't think they're going to be able to get underneath this toe here. No. So I'm going to have to use the angle grinder. Yep. Normally angle grinders are used to cut steel. Today, they're being used for something entirely different. Good girl. Well done. Gretzky. You were done, girl. girl. Good girl. Oh. Well done. Good girl. Yeah, I'm happy. Good girl. Oh. Well done. 
Good girl, well done. What did they do to you, hey? After everything Gretel and I have been through in the last few minutes, the only way I'm gonna feel okay is if we kiss and make up. Mm. Mm. It's better for you than it is for me, I trust me. Oh. I probably had one coming, didn't I? Hmm? It's actually better than what I thought, the outcome. We've um, trimmed both of those front uh, hoofs and it's come up really well. All right, well, I'm done, I well, think. Well, not quite, not quite. We've it's just never done that. with you, is it? <laughs> We've just got one more special one just before you race off. All right, one more. And this is a little one. Just one more, a little one? A little one. A real little one? A really little one. At SASH, the CT scan on the gravely ill Bello is about to begin. Good boy, Bello. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel collapsed at home and is now so dizzy that he's unable to stand. The causes of balance problems can be related to something inside the brain or something outside the brain. And what we really need to do with Bello is work out what's causing these signs. Never seen him like that before. Poor Belly. It's an agonising wait for owner Glenda and her daughter-in-law Georgia. They're terrified that Bellow's symptoms might be caused by a tumour. He is our baby. All our boys have grown up now and he's our little boy. He's never been away from us. Yeah, it's just that he's always been with us wherever we are, he is. I really hope that it's not a brain tumour. If it is, the outcome's going to be pretty bad. Look at them. It's like a baby animal calendar that just come to life. Look at it. <laughs> at Edgar's mission, Pam has convinced Chris to carry out one final health check, this time in the nursery. <laughs> there are all sorts of lambs, piglets, goats, of all shapes, all sizes, and all colours. <laughs> Hello. Hey, guys. Hi, how are you going? I don't think anyone can come to Edgar's mission and leave without having given one of our little special babies a bottle feed. So it turns out my final patient for today is a little goat called Boots. Boots likes to use his boots to get on top of my vet case. And what happened to Boots? Um, boots actually came all the way down from the Madura Pound. He hitchhiked his way. Oh, there you go, Boots. He's a pound goat. He's a pound goat. How did he end up in the pound? Uh, well, apparently he was on the side of the road, yeah. pound up there on the highway, and um, he was taken to the local pound. <laughs> you're cheeky. Yeah, you're cheeky, aren't you? Um, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> After playing by the rules initially, all hell breaks loose. The bottles are not for pigs right now. Especially, oh, don't bite. You cannot do that. You're playing dirty now. You are playing dirty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the piglets, the kids, the lambs realise that in an orphanage, there are no rules. It is every man for himself. <laughs> Officially the hardest job of the day. Oh, yes. You got me. Didn't you? That was a good one. <laughs> Every time I come out here, it really reinforces to me just how special Pam is, how devoted she is to each and every one of these animals. And to see these little guys given their second chance and really relishing it, it makes you realise why Pam does the work she does. <laughs> oh, not you. What are you going to bite next? Don't, don't bite down there. <laughs> no. Oh. I think I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. Good boy, Bella. At SASH, Lisa is examining Bello's CT results. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel suddenly collapsed at home. Well, that explains his signs. Lisa can now give the news to devoted owner Glenda and daughter-in-law Georgia. So his brain looks okay on the CT scan, so I think we are dealing with a 
primary middle ear problem. Okay. okay. The area behind the eardrums is filled with fluid. Okay. Mm -hmm. It should be empty right. and both sides are filled, filled with fluid. I think Glenda is actually quite relieved to hear that Bellow's got middle ear disease. She was so worried that it was going to be a brain problem. Is it normal for a dog that's so healthy to get this like in 24 hours? It can happen quickly. And you know, perhaps there was fluid in there and it yep. was to a point and it was, he was coping, he was coping and then, and then it just bang. got too full, puts pressure on the nerves and, and then that's bang, it. that's caused these yeah. signs. Okay. Okay, yeah. so next step would involve us actually taking him through to have a procedure done with one of our specialists. We're going to flush the ears and make them empty like how they should be. Yeah. And I'll speak to you straight afterwards. Okay. okay? Thank you. All right. Thanks very no much. No problem. You take care. Thank you. I am feeling relieved, but yeah, every procedure has concerns because you don't know what's going to happen. They're under a general. It'll be a long wait. Another Chris Brown, I don't know. While Chris is away working in Victoria, back in Bondi, Neil has taken delivery of a surprise package. Chris, he gets fan mail, he gets proposals from members of the public. Now we've got a second Chris. I feel really neglected. It's always about Chris. You can be on permanent display there. How's that? Oh, I don't like it. <laughs> it's a bit too scary. Come on, Chris, I know where you're best off. In the cupboard out of the way. In you go. Done. I'm really looking forward to my next patient. I don't get to see too many donkeys in the clinic, but when I was a kid, I used to have a pet donkey. He was called Pablo, and ever since then, I've just been fascinated by them. Chris is back on the road. He's now on his way to a famous donkey shelter outside Melbourne. The refuge is run by humanitarian May Dodd. Here at the shelter, we have um, about 150 donkeys in residence. They tend to be rescue donkeys of one form or another, either because of abuse, abandonment or neglect, or indeed that the owners are just too old to be able to cope with them anymore. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming. It's all right. Nice to meet you. Hi. Come now, on where's in. Where's this donkey it's we need to look at? It's this one here. Wow. That's quite dramatic, mate. May tells me that for the last week, Dusty has been walking and running in a really bizarre way. She doesn't know what's caused it. She has no idea. What she does know is that it's not normal. That's really something. It's very rare to see that. That is definitely not normal. It's almost like someone has control of his legs with little puppet strings and they're, they're pulling them up and down. But it must be awful for him because he just really struggles to get around. You've gone about the way you walk. Dusty has been with May for a year. Let's see what we can do, huh? The donkey arrived at the shelter in terrible condition, with one eye missing. How did he lose his eye, do you know? I, look, I have no idea. He was just like that when he came to yes. the shelter? Yeah. Now, with this walking, yep. a recent thing? Yes, and it seemed to start off with one leg and then alternate, and now it's in both legs. And I'm just a, worried, a bit worried he's distressed. Yeah. The thing that bothers me the most is that if we can't do anything, where is this leading to? There are a couple of things that could be causing this. Probably the most important thing to do is give them a really good check over now and just see if there are any sore spots to start with. Okay. Okay. May is really worried about Dusty and it's easy to see why. She knows that if his condition gets much worse and he can no longer walk, then she'll have no choice but to put him down. We need to find a solution here and find it fast. Just hold steady for a second, pull it back. At SASH, Lisa's working with dermatologist Dr Philippa Ravens to unblock six-year-old Bellow's ears. So what I think we're going to do now is see if we can make a little hole in that eardrum yep. and try and drain it. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel was rushed to SASH after suddenly collapsing at home. A build-up of fluid behind the eardrums has compressed his balance nerve and resulted in severe vertigo. It's a really tenacious bit. Mm. 
When we make that first puncture in Bellow's eardrum, what comes out is just this thick material. The middle ears should not have any fluid in them. They should be filled with air, and Bellow's middle ears are just packed with this thick, slimy mucus. We're flushing out all that muck, and hopefully that's going to relieve the pressure on his nerves and improve his balance. That must be so painful. So see, go in a bit, yeah, a bit more. We might actually just need to break it off piece by piece. Look at that, that is so thick. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at that. Seriously. Wow. That is That's massive. a lot of mucus. Well done, team. Lovely. I think we've pretty much got most of it out. Sometimes there's just a little bit of mucus. Certainly, I think he was towards the more extreme end. It will be interesting to see how quickly he recovers. Some dogs get better as soon as they wake up from the anaesthetic and some take a few more days. But no doubt he will be feeling instant relief. I think he's uh, pretty comfy now, snoring away. You got some relief, huh, buddy? You just have a good snooze. Good boy, come on. I've seen donkeys do some strange things, but I've never really seen one walk this way and walk in a way that really he has no control over. It's not. It's really right something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not right. In Tongala, Victoria, Chris is trying to find answers to a strange case. Dusty the donkey is suffering from a mystery illness which is making it impossible for him to walk normally. If nothing can be done and it deteriorates to a point that he can't move around, then really I'll have to look at euthanasia as an option. I just want to check through here to make sure, first of all, there's no pain in his spine. He's a good man. What I'm looking for along Dusty's spine are really any areas of soreness, any areas where he may have slipped a disc or he may have a pinched nerve. That could cause this strange walk. So you can see it's not worrying him. In fact, I think he quite enjoys the massage. Well, seems to. So I think we can safely say a back problem isn't causing that walk. Well, that's good. All right, next thing I want to check are his hooves. Yep. If he's got sore feet, then you can imagine yourself, if you've got bindies in your feet, what do you do? Yeah, you hop. You hold them up. Yeah. And you really don't want to put much weight on them. Yep. And that would explain why he's walking the way he is. Dusty. Oh, wicked. Sorry, Chris. Looking at Dusty's back feet, it's not easy, because each time I lift up one of his legs, it seems to go into a cramp and really lift up dramatically. That says to me that he has no control over what's going on here, plus it's sore. They actually look pretty good. Good. So what is it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's the big question, isn't it? With no problems in Dusty's spine and his back feet showing no issues at all, then this is a bit of a mystery. But I've got a hunch. There's something that affects horses that could be affecting Dusty. And the cause, it's right underneath us. Oh, this is where Dr. Chris lives. Oh, hi there. Hello. We were wondering if Dr. Chris is in at all. Um, I'm really sorry he's not actually here today. Because... Back in Bondi, a family have arrived hoping to meet their favourite vet. We get somebody in just about every day coming in to see Dr. Chris. They want a photo, they want an autograph, and he just can't be here all the time. Now wait for a minute, let me just sort something out. I think we might be able to find a lucky likey for him. Ooh, OK, thanks so much. Finally, Neil knows what to do with that cardboard cutout. Oh, oh wow. <gasps> He's much bigger in the real life. Oh. Do you think you might want to have a photo with cardboard Chris? Jeez. He didn't mind. I don't think he knew the difference at all. He looks very handsome, doesn't he? Doesn't say a lot. Mummy likes a man who doesn't say a lot. It's the actual perfect use for Dr. Chris. Cardboard Chris. All right, thanks so much, That's Neil. all right. I'm sorry the real Dr. Chris isn't here. He was really, really looking forward to seeing Dr. Chris, but I reckon Neil's done a really good job for us. I've been trying to get Chris out of the closet the whole time, but it's the cupboard under the stairs. That'll have to do. In you go. That's it. Close it. Bang, shut. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> 
So when I look at Dusty and see the way he walks, I know his back's not sore. Yep. I know that his feet aren't sore, but his walking is really, really abnormal. Yes. And the answer could actually be in here somewhere. In the pasture. Uh-huh. Back in country Victoria, Chris is hoping he's finally worked out just what's wrong with Dusty. There's something in my gut that's just saying that Dusty has string hole. It's a condition caused by a plant toxin which is found in some very select weeds. Now, donkeys eat this, it goes straight to their muscles and affects how those muscles fire. I'm looking for something in here It's actually quite nasty. Oh, okay. And it doesn't take a lot of it to cause a donkey like Dusty problems. Okay. If my hunch is right, then the weed that most commonly causes string halt is gonna be somewhere in this paddock. We've just gotta find it. Otherwise, his problem's only gonna get worse. Come on, Dusty. Ha, here. See this? This weed here has a toxin in it. It's called flatweed. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this weed in their own gardens. But for a donkey, just to eat a small amount of it, it can cause what is a really dramatic problem. So he eats the weed, goes into his system. Yeah. The toxins go to his hamstrings. Okay. And they actually cause little spots there. Right. And the muscle dies off. And when that happens, the nerves no longer fire properly. So when he's okay. walking along, it's like he gets a cramp each time. Oh, and it lifts I up his leg. Yeah, yeah. Like there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And for him, the whole cause of all of his problems is that, are that strange way he walks is that? He's sitting right there. It seemed remarkable that something so sparse and so small could have such a devastating effect on a, on a relatively large animal. Um, but I guess the toxin must be quite potent. So, Dusty, unbeknownst to me, you've become addicted to weeds. What a silly sausage. Hey? All your leg problems are coming from that. So, we're going to have to rehabilitate you. It seems really strange that with all the other grasses available, Dusty wants to eat this weed, but that's what happens. They really get a taste for particular flavours in this plant and they keep on coming back for more. It's almost like Dusty is a weed addict. We really need to find a spot where there's just no access to that flat weed at all. A little rehab area. Okay. You got the spot for us? Well, I think so. I'll yeah. show you. You okay. see what you think. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Come on then, let's show. Come on. That's it. Game's up, isn't it? Huh? May's property is huge and absolutely covered in flatweed. We need to isolate Dusty and take away that temptation. Otherwise, his problem's only going to get worse. We reviewed your case and as soon as though you didn't really know you were doing something bad, you get a reward rather than punishment. Dusty will spend his days detoxing on hay and eventually he'll be able to return to a paddock stripped of the offending weed. You're certainly enjoying that chaff. <laughs> I think there's a few jealous donkeys around here. Yes, that's right. And now plotting how they can get on the weed as well. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Slow and steady steps for Dusty and I'm very hopeful he'll be back to normal. Thank you very much for the time and effort you've put in. We're very grateful. Right. No worries, I, I get my kicks because well, they're never dull, are they? No, they're certainly not dull, no. What I mean. It's good to <laughs> see you. that. Thank you. Take care. Bello, you want to come out? Next morning at Sash, Lisa is ready to release Bello. 24 hours ago, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel was unable to stand. An emergency procedure to clear the dangerous blockage in his ear has been successful. Good boy, Bello. Although it will take some time for his balance nerve to fully recover. Good boy, Bello. He is strutting his stuff, wagging his tail. He is a different dog to what he was when he came in. Glenda and her son Matthew are waiting to take their beloved cavalier home. I was very relieved it wasn't a brain tumour and it came out to be the mucus in the ears. <laughs> Look who's there. I'm going to start crying. <laughs> Look who's there. Hello. Oh, he looks so much better. He's walking and he's wagging oh. his tail and he's happy. He's so much better. Kiss, 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 kiss. Oh, yes. We miss kisses. Yes, we have. <laughs> Haven't we? Compared to when we brought him in. 
it's amazing. Sorry, I'm emotional. No, you're, you're allowed to be emotional. This is a pretty traumatic thing. It is. To, to go from healthy to being that sick and now he's sort of bounced back. Yeah. It's so good. That was a delightful reunion. Glenda was so emotional. I didn't think she had any idea that Bello would be this good. This is overwhelming. <laughs> it's been nine weeks and every day we come up and we check our little gator eggs in the incubating room. I like, to listen to that. That's it, that's what we want. There are some new arrivals at the Australian Reptile Park and these noisy babies are already full of cheek. Ah, ah, ah! Hey, excuse me. Baby gators make that little cry and they call out to mum and mum comes and rescues them. She picks them up and you know what she does? She takes them to water. And that's exactly what I'm doing, taking them from the nest into some water. They have a rinse off, get rid of all the yuck from inside the egg and now I'm gonna take them to their new home. They're ready to go. It's time to put you into your new home. Let's go. Hold on. This little cage that we've got the gators to go in, it's purpose built for baby gators. We want our visitors to be able to see these tiny little gators. Not too quick. You wanna stay with me, right? Oh, you stay. There you go. They're jumping off these little ledges and, and hitting that water. They're up and their eyes are out, and this is the start of their new life. Listen to the calls. Even in here now, they're still calling for mum. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.